many of you have already introduced yourselves to each other. But the way I do as far as we practice, where we sit in a circle and we do static stretching, and I'll get to that, and old timers such as myself and maybe a couple others know what that is, and the newbies will say, ah, nobody does static stretching. I mean, the cliched way is state your name, school, how long you've been coaching. Let's do it this way. Uh, state your name, tell us what your favorite ice cream flavor is and your least favorite ice cream flavor is. If you don't have one, well, that's your answer. Again, my name is Grant Inger. Favorite ice cream flavor, chocolate chip. Least favorite, mint chocolate chip. Christopher Hoey, um, my favorite ice cream is uh, garlic ice cream. Excellent. And uh, garlic my garlic least garlic favorite garlic. is purple. Good. Purple ice cream. Kristen Roberts, my favorite is Jamoka Almond Fudge, and least would be sherbet. Good. Well, look, to bring it back, so what's the point? Why are we talking about ice cream with him? Look, this is what I do with my students. And if you ask your students, and this is one of the questions, why are you coming out for the tennis team? Why are you coming back out for the tennis team? You might have a few gunners who are ready to compete for a title, but most of those kids, most of the kids say they want to be part of a team. They came out because they want to have fun. They want to make some friends. You know, and this sort of like team building where you ask them, throw them a question like ice cream or best last movie they saw or what superpower skill would they want to have. It gets them just talking, you get a few laughs out of it. Well, look, I'm not the sage on the stage. I don't have all the answers. I'm not the expert. I would just as much like this to be an idea sharing session as anything. And you know, as a teacher where I start with my objectives, I hope you come up, even with you've been doing this for a long time, you come away with at least four or five things that you can incorporate in your season this year. Let's talk about this, the information meeting. Have you already had your information meeting? Okay, yeah, it's somewhere like meeting next week. I've already had a week, two hours in December, because I want to try to do it before Christmas break. So what do we cover? I'll run through this quickly. This is your fifth time through for me. Uh, but look, it's the standard fare in the sense of I go over the team rules. Um, I give out the practice schedule and the season schedule. One of the things for us, now this is in Anne Arundel County, we're all lumped together as far as the tennis team is concerned. As a point of comparison, lacrosse has boys and girls, and varsity and JV, so that's four separate teams really, four separate entities. In tennis, we're all mixed together. I got my boys and girls, varsity, JV, and one little squad. So sometimes the question, well, how do you determine varsity? And for me, just me personally, I have 9th and 10th graders have to play at least half of their matches as a varsity player. 11th and 12th grader has to play two matches in order to get their varsity letter. Other coaches do it differently, but there's no set rule versus football. If you're on the varsity team, then you're a varsity player. So that, that's one of the things we address and one of the things is a program we talk about. For captains, I, you know, I do have criteria. I share that, but it's very like loosely worded for a lot of wiggle room. I have like two or three, I say usually two or three captains that are usually 11th or 12th graders. They have to be varsity players, and there's just a little checklist. Sometimes I've been pre-selected. My coach and I, my assistant coach, we pick two or three captains. I do allow the team to vote and put, submit, and we choose um, whoever they, they feel should be a captain. Method of communication, how you get the word out. Does anyone use remind.com or remind101? I teach in the school, in the building where I, um, where I coach, so that makes life a lot easier. Kids can just come and go. I can tell one of them they can text each other. Nobody emails me. We email. The kids don't. But I do send an email blast out to the parents. It's <coughs> rainy and drizzly at 11 a.m. And then the coach asked me, are you still on for today? And for us in Anne Arundel, it can be bright and sunny in the north part and then dreary and miserable in the southern part. So, you know, you want to find some way of getting the information out. It's remind.com. It allows you to send an email that gets sent out as a text message. There's no phone number sharing. They can't respond back. But you can send a tennis match versus southern cancel today practice tomorrow and send it out there. And everybody gets it. There's no back and forth exchange, like with email, for example. Um, so it's remind.com or remind101. There's others that coaches might use and can share how to, get, how to get the word out. And I can send one email out to my distribution list and it's done. So but what, just make sure you have something in mind is all I'm saying. For uniforms, we are not a pay to play district. Are there any out here where the kids, the athletes have to pay? How much are we looking at if you don't mind asking? Like, $30. Yeah, it's any, it seems like. Okay. That stuff adds up. I mean, as a teacher, you know, I don't make a, it doesn't grow on the trees. And, you know, I'm, I'm certainly cognizant as far as parents who have several athletes, you know, playing several sports, and they have gym fees and lab fees and yearbooks and everything else to say nothing about college, you know, trying to save up for. So I try to keep it as cost minimum, as low as possible. For fundraisers, I do a fundraiser. I'm not shilling for Joe Corby's, but that's what we do. But really, when March rolls around, everyone's got fundraiser burnout. 
So at our information meeting, I just straight up asked for, you know, if anybody wants to donate, we'll, we'll take it and, and be glad to. No amount is too small or too big. And so that's just to try to get that money. Because we don't have much in the, in the budget. Uh, we get, I think, like $150. That's about it in the tennis budget. And that's all there is. And if there's a question about textbooks or tennis equipment, there's no debate. I mean, it's, it, no matter what, we're kind of on the low end, but we need money. So it's something to consider. I don't know if you do fundraising, if you're successful with it, uh, or if not, just something to consider. But let's talk about the next meeting, which is with the Meet the, the, meet the Coaches Night. Do all of us do that? Yes. I mean, for us, it's mandated by the, you know, all of us do it. If not, so you might want to just set one up, and you can do it like after practice one day, and I just need to meet with all the coaches. What do you talk about? The same sorts of things. I talk about a chain of command. If they want to complain, well, there's an order to it. They either talk with me first, then the athletic director, then the administrator for athletics, then the principal, and not go straight to the superintendent, which some of them will do. So there have to at least, you put that out there. I talk about other costs. There's the uniform, but there's also sweatshirts and jackets, and a, a team shirt if they want to buy that. Put that information out there. Important dates, for example, important dates that they have that they should give to me if their kid has a course trip that always comes along. Uh, they're part of the, the, the musical, they should, they should let me know. And what I would also say as far as something to, to keep in mind is delegate, delegate, delegate. If you can find a good parent who can sort of help you out and coordinate stuff, then I would use that to its full advantage, if not exploit it. If you have a good, competent, organized parent. If not, you know, it's, you're almost creating just as much work for yourself. But particularly with senior send-off, senior night. You know, traditionally for every sports team, that last home match, you honor your seniors. I have a parent do that. And they can order the balloons, they want to do the cake, and take pictures. I have a parent do all that, because pretty much we all have enough on our plate as it is. And the other thing is I also talk about your spectator expectations. You know, they see you at a tennis match, they see you going up to the net, or going to the fence and conferring with that 90 seconds. And they think to themselves, well, I got something to say too. And I'll just take it upon themselves and go up there. And they need to know not to do that. And really, they might think that they can, or they say, well, I saw at the other school they were doing it. Uh, but that is definitely against the rules. And so that they need to be aware of that. Well, let's talk about this. To keep or to cut. How many practice a no cut? You know, USTA promotes a no cut policy. We want to grow our sport, which seems to be shrinking. Um, so one of the things is no cut. But how many are no cut? How many you don't cut? Take them off. God bless y'all. Good job. Um, how many do make cuts? And let's talk about that. Yeah. Look, look let's. You know, this is not something we can say. That, as far as so everybody knows, cutting the players, it sucks. I hate it. And especially as a teacher, and I know there's a sort of delicate sight to involved. But you want a chair? No. Um, you know, dealing with high school kids, and then it's got to be almost humiliating for them to tell you know to share with their friends they got cut. So it absolutely sucks, but at the same time, for me, it's a question of how many players can I keep and, and, and run an effective program? For me, personally, 24 to 25. 12 boys, 12 girls. That works out well. Now, I didn't realize, for me, I have eight courts. That evidently is a lot. Yeah, a lot. Yes. Yeah, well, in Anne Arundel, Arundel has five, and Mead has five, but others, most of us have eight courts. Yeah, I know. I, so, I, like, I, I didn't realize there was... That's crazy. Okay. Well, what we'll talk about and share ideas as far as running a big squad with a few number of courts. But for me, that, again, I'm a bit limited to how many players I want to keep. And so, how things to consider. An 11th or 12th grader coming out for the team for the first time, they need to be varsity ready. They need to have shown some commitment. And I don't know if other sports get this, like in baseball, some kid showing up for the team who's never played organized ball. But I get it in tennis a lot. Yeah, right. Kid coming out on a lark, I'm gonna give tennis a try. Again, for an 11th to 12th grader, you know, I t by county policy, 12th graders cannot play on JV. And for you know, we can sort of get around that a little bit by renaming it to a B squad. But for 11th to 12th graders, they need to be ready. The others, you know, do they have? Do they know the rules? Can they keep score? Can they hit the four basic strokes? Do they know what they are? And the question is, well, how do you do it? For us, our AD says you may not. You may not just post a list of names. Your name's on the list. You made it. You're not on the list. Well, sorry, you didn't. So the way we do it, and the way I do it personally, and I got to do it quickly. That's the other thing. I do it at the, the second day of practice. I'm going to make make the cuts. Bring the whole squad together. We meet in the cafeteria. My returning players, I send them up to my classroom. Then I have all the newbies. I call them up pretty much one at a time. 
And you got to say to them, you know, I appreciate you coming out for the team, but I'm sorry it didn't work out and I don't have a spot for you. Um, maybe, and you know, always try to give them something specific to work on rather than, mm, it's not good enough. Um, and then you take it from there. Some of them will accept it and shake hands and walk off. I've had kids throw their tennis rack in the trash can and the tears, <laughs> and they get the nasty emails afterwards and you need to be ready for that. But as far as cutting, it sucks and I hate it. And that drive home afterwards, I'm sort of racking my brain, like, God, maybe I should, maybe we could have kept them. But I can't keep somebody where you, you hit the ball to them and the rally's over. And it kind of brings the whole team down. And my role as a coach is different from my role as an instructor. If I'm teaching one, one young man here just how to hold the racket and the idea of a backswing and you swing through, then I can't talk double strategy with this, my, my varsity squad over here. So that's, those are the considerations. That's how I do it. Any feedback as far as what works, what doesn't work, any other, how to soften that blow a bit? Do you have an assistant? Are you I do have an assistant. I have myself and an assistant. So again, with 24 players on eight courts, you know, it's like three or four per yeah. court. You know, you can mix it up a little bit, but it, it's tough. Yeah. I have a checklist. Here, it's five points. Athletic, I don't remember why. Athleticism, um, skill set within the sport, attitude, potential for growth, and something else I can't even remember. But I mean, and we have, we have to document that. We really have to put a specific number down. And if somebody does question, I can at least refer to that. Okay. And we're just saying, ah, it just wasn't good enough. So you have a checklist in mind. Well, I have one drill that I do with them where I have two players on the center market line. I'm right, right about where here we all are. As I have a basket of balls, I two, take two balls, I throw them out, and those players have to go out, hit the ball, run back. While I do that, I throw two more balls out. So it's a good footwork drill. I had a parent question that, saying, how can you possibly see all that at once? You're throwing two balls out there, because this is out their vision. How can you possibly see what, you know, what the players are doing? One, I can hear it. One, your coach. Right, <laughs> and, and that's the other thing. Um, but for me, I mean, I gotta make it quickly. I've tried to scare them off at the information meeting. I had standing room only, I had over 40. I, had, I only had 32 desks, so I had kids standing up. And then for us personally, Saturday is the first day, that February 28th, I guess it's this year. That's court cleanup for us. They come 10 o'clock in the morning with rakes, brooms, trash bags. We gotta clear our courts of all the leaves and foliage that's on there right now. And so the kids take about an hour to do that, then we start the tryouts. Even after that, I pretty much know 90% who's gonna go. But I'll, I'll try to even tell them, Again, the 11th and 12th graders, you know, coming out, you might not probably have a spot for you. But no matter what, after that second day, I got to make it, and I'm ready for parents that, that blow back, and they're gonna, I know they're going to get those, send those emails out. Um, but for me, I mean, honestly, I, I stand by my years of experience. I think I can make a pretty good decision. Yeah, they'll question it. The other thing I say as far as cuts is the, the decision's final. Even as a teacher, I know that whatever you put in writing as an email, it's going to stay there forever. So you need to watch what you say. Right. And I always am still, you know, apologetic. I'm sorry, you know, that we didn't have a, a spot on the roster for him. Let's talk about it over the phone. And then I can that then then it's not unless they're recording the the, the conversation. <laughs> and you still, I mean, you know, given the choice between nasty or nice, pick nice. And so I still, you know, thank them for coming out. I try to explain them who let that roster up. But I do question. I guess you could say this. I'll ask the parent. Have you ever coached high school sports? And usually the answer is no. Do you coach tennis? Like, you know, no. Do you play tennis? You three, five, four, oh, usually no. I'm like, have you ever seen your kid play? And again, maybe you don't have to deal with it, but I've had players, or excuse me, parents with, say no to all those, but still think they're in a better position to make that call. And at that point, I'll turn around, look, I've been doing this for a long time, I'm playing forever. I list my credentials and still say, you know, I wish we had room for them. But I will at least say this. Ask your, your athletic program, is there a spot for kids who just want to be part of a team? For us, track will take anybody. In the fall, cross country will take everybody. Well, this is from across the sports. If somebody just wants to be part of a team, they want to do high school sports, at least there's a, an outlet for them. You got your squad in place. Now it's time for practice. We, we start 3 o'clock and run to 5 o'clock every Monday through Friday. Here's what my practice looks like. And I, our AD asks all the coaches to submit a sample, and this is pretty much it. This is how I do it. We start with a hit around. So when we get out there, and they're just warming up. And a lot of times, they're just hitting around. But I also want them to do something competitive. So I could be here, and you're on the other side, and we'll play rally points. So we're not serving. I'll just hit a courtesy ball, a drop ball. You hit it back, it's on. Then we'll play this out. Then we'll play the first one to 10. Loser does push-ups, or does something. So that's part of the hit around. So at least there's a little bit of structure to it. That for me, I do static stretching. I mean, again, they're in a circle, we talk about something, I can sort of do my little team meeting, we discuss any irregularities that come up, and there's lots. So after a match, the kids will say, you know, we were playing against these guys, he hit the ball, and it just sort of like just touched, grazed the kid's t-shirt, and we kept playing. Is that right? 
You know, what do we do? They'll ask questions like that. Or a kid hit with so much slice, it went over, and then it came back on my side. Then what do I do? Um, so then you talk about all those things. Before the match that we had, we played a match. The grandfather on the outside called it out, and everybody stopped play. So what is that? Are we supposed to do that? So you can talk about all those things as we're doing the old style static stretching with your baseball stretches that and the hurdlers. So I have them still do that. Other new coaches would say would laugh at it and say, "You still doing that?" Nobody. We do, and then we do dynamics, the plyometrics. And I usually have the, the captains do that. They all know all the terms, like the Frankensteins and the, the swing gate. They know all the terms. They do that. And we do a distance run. I usually have them run like a mile. And I usually go with them. I mean, I say as far as if you're a tennis player, you're an athlete. If you're an athlete, you need the legs and the stamina. The only way you're going to get that is through running. And so we do as far as there's a back loop, front loop, double, we have a big one that goes all the way around the campus. And I'm out there with them. I mean, it's good, actually, if, it's good, if it's important to them, it's important to me. So we do a distance run. If you have only a few courts, this is where you can sort of stagger a little bit, send all the girls out. And, I mean, I'm not trying to go you know, as far as divide up agenda, but it is kind of the easiest way. Girls, you do your stretches, you do your run, let me work with the boys. Girls come back, boys, your turn, you do the run. After that, I do full group drills where I'm working with like the entire squad. We'll do like around the world. I'll do one where we just count off one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, one is court one, two is court two, and then I'll do something where they're just hitting the ball, four hands only. I blow the whistle, they rotate. Still four hands. Blow the whistle, they rotate. Now back hands. Blow the whistle, go up to the net, hit volleys. Blow the whistle, have them rotate around using all the courts. I don't know how you would do it with just two courts, but I mean, I try to get everybody involved. Then we break up as far as just individual, or I'll lead a group of eight and do an individual drill. My assistant coach will do something, another type of drill. The other players need to be working. They shouldn't just be hitting around. They need to have something specific, some sort of modified match play. As far as in order to win the, in order to win the point, it has to, you know, the ball has to go beyond the surface line. Or something along, you know, no dink balls. Or you, as far as doubles, in order to win the point, you guys have to win it at the net or it doesn't count. So some sort of modified play. And then we finish with sprints. We finish either with just sprints going back and forth with that, you know, the old style basketball, suicides. Not to that extent. We'll do gassers where they go up to the net and back and do a diet. We'll do that. And I, a lot of times, run with them. And then you bring them back to the fence. It's very easy to talk to them when they're out of breath. And then send them home. Just one last reminder about who we're playing tomorrow and sign in. Well, the one key little phrase I say is this, is practice with a purpose. Where don't just go out there and hit. Don't just go out there and do the same thing you've been doing. Don't run around your backhand. Because if you're not going to work on it then during practice, and win. Now I understand if it's a match point, you got to do what you got to do to win that point. But during practice, have something specific in mind. And I'll even ask them ahead of time. I want you to have something specific in mind to work on, whether it's your serve or hitting with topspin or footwork. And if I come around and ask you that, I, that's the answer. And it can be the same thing throughout. But they need to be just doing out, just instead of just going out there and hitting, you have to actually conceptualize some specific skill to work on throughout. But if it rains for two, three days in a stretch. You give them all that time off, they come back, and you got a lot of rust to scrape off. I would say, yeah, right. You can do that in the gym, but the problem with that, you know, for us, well, everybody has the gym, so baseball, across, everybody's in the gym. Well, sometimes you can use that if all the coaches are on board. Have the, the, the cross captains lead everybody in the, in the stretching. They can run around the school. For the gym, we can't hit against the wall because our walls are padded, so the basketball players don't crash into them. So in the past, we could just hit against the wall. But you can have an imaginary net. You can bring a chair out. Hips, it's about, net's about hip level. So you can just have them do that. We, we can use the little gym and hit against the wall. Um, you can take them up to a classroom and watch YouTube drills. For, uh, for ideas, go to YouTube and just type in large group drills or player-led drills. And there's a lot of good stuff out there. It's tough. you just got to be creative. Okay. Uh, even having them just running around the school or doing steps, just something to stay physical. You know, parents and, and coaches or whoever is going to just question your your expertise. I would say have a strategy in mind, just knowing that here's what they're going to convince you about the most, uh, why their kid's not playing. And like I saw the doubles team, my kid's better than that kid. I mean, we all know it. Why don't you put him in there? And then you're going to get questions like that. Or just unfair treatment. I had to watch <laughs> clicks developing. That certainly happens with any sport. Uh, but this, these are the things that just have a strategy in mind that this is where these are going to be the points of attack, and so, so as I would just again sort of like anticipate what they might say. Hopefully, your athletic director, your administrator, support above you, 
but just be ready for people to question, well, that's with anything. And, and the other thing is, you're not gonna satisfy everyone. Um, again, just my suggestion as far as dealing with them, just try to think ahead of time what they're gonna say and then what you're gonna say in response to it. On mass day, um, you know, just remind, remind keep, you know, clean the courts, have people help with that. I always measure the nets. I have water for us. I have at least water access for the opponents. <clears throat> Spectator, we already have that designated ahead of time. And like, you know, when the coaches come, I always, you know, greet them, give them the courts for a little bit, and then, then we're on. At least for us, the way we do it, we exchange lineups. So like for Chesapeake, boys number one, and then they shake hands, and go back. And then afterwards, we do a high five line. A lot of sports do that, and the kids know that in soccer. We do that in tennis as well. Uh, and, and the kids enjoy that. I think it's a, a nice little ending touch rather than, okay, game's over, go to your buses in. For match day also, I have food brought in. I have parents designated to bring food in. Because for us, we start at 7 o'clock in Anne Arundel County. And we start early, we finish early. But for kids, for the players, if they have that first lunch, they're eating at 10.30, that first brunch, 10.30 in the morning, and that tennis match goes on till 5 or 6 o'clock. You're going to be hungry. I'm going to be hungry. So I always have parents as far as bring food in. Now, it should be, you know, sports appropriate. And we had a list of things that we, we suggest, but really, we'll take anything, whether it's a subway, six-foot sub, pizzas, um, and, and for afterwards, and they respond well. I have a post-match assessment sheet that the kids fill out. It's just questions about, are you happy with the results? What could you work on in practice? It doesn't say as far as wins or losses, and there's like two other questions, I don't remember what they are. But they write that stuff out. I know for advanced players, I know a coach who tried to have like a JV player watch this match and sort of record first serve percentages and things. And, and, and the, the, the grid was, Extremely complicated. I don't know how many of your players could like say, well, that was first surface and it was 44%, 44, that's all. But most of them didn't. But afterwards, I think they should reflect a little bit. And so they write it out. They give it to me. I look over it. And it's something that you know, we sort of talk about as well. And this is an idea I got from the coach's clinic. You know those novelty Wilson balls that you see professional? Well, we order one. It's about like $24. And so at the end of each match, we designate who's going to get the game ball. Usually one or two players. Kid who wins the first varsity match, come on up, and then we all clap and they sign it. <coughs> and then at the end of the season, that ball is filled with signatures, and I give that away as part of the Spring Sports Awards. Now, the, the Spring Sports Awards MVP, Most Improved in Sportsman, and I give that game ball, and for some, I think that's as valuable as anything. I've had kids who say that, yeah, I still have the game ball, and they show me a picture of it in their college dorm room. And so it's something to consider, it's a nice touch. You know, in football, they award a game ball, so the same general idea, and it works, and, it, it, and they respond well to it and that everything we do really should be as a teacher first and as a coach second. And the young people we work with, our students first and athletes second. And again, I just think if you sort of remember that throughout, that you really are a teacher working with students, and that's kind of your classroom, uh, I think that should be like your sort of unifying principle throughout.